Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when feet and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Ryle representing for I just star mindset Rich forever Blessed love, pleasant good afternoon Warm welcome, mindset program I just star my host and I want to greet the item in the divine name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Eel Selassie I, the first, Empress Menin the first, Holy Manuel I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. One more day above ground, beautiful viewers and subscribers, as the item know that life is our ultimate position, you know, not no greater than life, no matter what I go on. All right, so give thanks. Um, I would urge the item to please push that like button. Um, please subscribe if the item haven't done so yet. That is important. All right. So we have a special um guest on the program today, and I can tell the item that it's gonna be a very um powerful program. We have a long-standing um member, Rastafari Bridging of um. The Ethiopian Royal Federation, um, a bridging from the UK that have moved um, from the UK to Ethiopia, a bridging that has done a lot of work in helping and in aiding I and I bridgings and sistering in the movement of Rastafari in Ethiopia. The bridging go by the name of Ruben Kush, and I want to introduce him to the mindset program blessed love honorable greetings uh, um i just uh greetings to the Rastafari global family and black conscious people around the world giving thanks for the opportunity um to address ones um today and um, give enough thanks Rastafari bless Rastafari yes Ruben it's great to have the hype on um the program today I've I've heard so much great things um, about the eye, mixed things as well, you see me I say, but um, it's good that the eye is here today um, to, to share with us and it's a great honor to have the eye upon the platform, my lord. Giving thanks, giving thanks. Yes, <coughs> King. Far I live. Yes, far I. So, all right, Ruben. Okay. Um, by the name Ruben that I tell me already said the eye is someone who born April. Yes, that's right. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, my brother. Talk to me about, um, you know, coming into Rastafari and, and, and where did that journey start for the eye? Well, it started for I uh, as a teenager still. You know, as, um, you know, I mean, parents coming from Jamaica and being born in England and, you know, coming up to the Methodist Church and, you know, I mean, um, studying and you know doing all the all, all the things that uh, youngsters do yes um certain incidents um happened um as a teenager that made me really look into myself mm -hmm. all my brethren um who I was around at the time were locksing up and you know chanting rastafari and at that time it, it wasn't something that i was really um holding on to you know, others and then certain things happened within my life at that time made me look into myself and it's it's like a, a slap you know what i mean you get a slap on the knee or you get a slap on the neck to kind of jerk you and, and and wake you up and, and bring you into your consciousness mm -hmm. and that that was that's my experience and from that experience you know what i mean i started to try to um, ratify liberty um started to study more um of his majesty um looking at the bible also in a different way to how um it was taught to me as a youth got me to really understand that you know prophecy has to be fulfilled True. and if we're if we're talking about prophecy then we have to look for the prophecies to be fulfilled and all the things that um was said about his majesty i got to see that these are the prophecies that, that's in the bible and that got me to really study more read a lot more about his majesty read his um his autobiography read his speeches he had speeches for um, domestic, uh, um, and he also had speeches for when he travelled abroad. Mm. And the messages that um, he brought was 
one of empowerment, one of, you know, I mean, knowing thyself, balancing a oneself, and for the betterment of a oneself. And if 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 you're strong within yourself, then you can be strong within your community. And That's the far right. in England at, the, at that time in in, in Birmingham, mm-hmm. there was a strong um, community. For and us we worked right. together. We Eli, you can hear me. Yeah, man, but hear me, I say, before the I reach Dessa, Zane and the uh-huh. Trad, we are going to forward to Dessa still. Zane, but uh-huh. before the I reach there, what was the transition like for the I now as someone who grew up in a Christian home, Zane, in a country where there are certain isms, Zane, what was the transition for the I now, transition from from from... The the, 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 the the Christian mind of thinking into Rastafari. Well, um, the real the reality of life still, you know, was because living in England as a, as a youth wasn't easy. You know what I mean? You you couldn't um, go certain places um, with a, uh, unless you knew you was going to get into a fight. You had to be ready to fight. Certain clubs you could go into, certain certain clubs you couldn't go into, and then after a while. You know, I mean, you, you get into the music, but, and the but, reggae music played a a real part in that. When when but the I I pray the when the I said getting into fight, what what type of fights were there? What type of physical, fights you did I get into? Physical fights. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical you, fights, you go, but what racist fights yeah. are? What yes, type of fight? Not, all right, all right then. You 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 go you go to. Uh, when I was a teenager, we got to discos. All right, you go to a disco, you start dance. The, the girls, them like the way you dance, they like the way you talk. They gravitate to you. Mm. Where others in the dance didn't too like that. See it. Over. So when 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 it's done now, they want to fight you. You over. You you go into the city center on the weekends. You are guaranteed to get into a fight. You over. Um, the skinheads were were active at the time. Um, the racist um, elements were active at the time. You couldn't get no work, you know. What I mean, you, you you didn't leave school. You were kind of kicked out of school at sixteen, and and you know, go your way, mm. find your way, do do whatever you want to do. There was no real guidance and direction from the system because the system was racist. The, um, when I when I left school, a lot of ones were trying to get apprenticeships. It was very difficult to get apprenticeships. All you could get was training jobs, and as soon as you get into the factory, they won't put the broom in your hand. They want to tell you where the cops are, tell you where the tea is. At 10 o'clock, you, you go and buy the sandwiches, you make the tea, same at lunchtime and, and same in the afternoon. So, and I like you and come you, for you learn trade. Yes, that's how I got to, to learn my trade still. No, but you know, me, so there was a lot of, there was what, a lot of things that, that we couldn't really uh, access. Mm. And education and, and getting a, a decent job um, was all part of it at that time. So we rebelled. You know, as, as, as you, so we rebelled against parents, we rebelled against church, we rebelled against the system, you know, as, and, and we found our own way mm. that so, suited us. So what Rastafari right now did for the eye, Zane, um, going through all of that and knowing all these things exist and you have to deal with them, what, 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 what Rastafari right did for the eye? What type of changes Rastafari right bring into the eye life? Well, I can, well, the first thing I'll say, you, you know, you become radical. Mm. And once you become radical, you become a danger to the system. You know what I mean? So that radicalization is not what the system um, expects of, of young black men in, in, you know, in, in the system. So we rebelled. We became radical. We got to understand that there's a struggle. And we are, we're either in the struggle or we're out of the struggle. You over. So as a Rasta, we're in the struggle. You over. So we don't take no chat. Mm-hmm. First of all, and we move, we move forward, forward thinking. We're milking the system as we go along. We want to take back from the system what was taken from us. So these things, you know, are in the mind, and and, and your mind develops, and you become revolutionary within your thoughts. Sometimes you you can't really enact that rev- re- um, revolutionary um, tactics um, for fear of you know going to prison or you know what I mean being you know, I mean, um, Babylon coming down upon you and all kind of different things. So it was about organizing and centralizing. 
So as a teenager, as, as a Rasta youth coming through now, the question I always used to ask was, how are we going to repatriate? You over because by them time there, we, you know, sound system are run every street in Birmingham, mm -hmm. in, in all areas had a sound system. You know, I mean, you had blues dance going on um, in every area, every night. You know, I mean, you, 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 you had different um, regions with their sound system, you know, I mean, and you had clash and sound clash and, and, and things like that. You over. So, and in those, in, in those dances, the young Rasta man, them like myself, we were in there selling badges, we were selling, you know, I mean, green, gold, red items, you know, I mean, we were selling, you know, pictures of His Majesty and we're earning our money. But you see, when the dance done, and you and you uh, you earned your money. You you you, you used your money to buy your herb. You you buy a drink. You 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 get a taxi to reach home. By the time you reach home, you don't really. You've got no money to show for for the work that you that you've done for the for the evening. So it's like, well, how are we going to repatriate on this? Mm -hmm. How would this ever work? You over. So within within them within that realms, I came up, uh, across the, e the Ethiopian World Federation of Bridging. I went to buy a drawer somewhere and a bridging gave me a, sold me a drawer actually in a, a flyer for a, a meeting of the EWF and I attended that meeting. And from then, um, my question was answered. Seeing. All right. B -b 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 All right. So before you came to the EWF, because you, you, you speak about um, how the system was set up in a sense where the item jobs and, and and apprenticeship apprenticeship and these things was was hard to to get zen and having a skill is is a very important thing all right was it before joining the ewf the i became um the i get a skill as what the i is doing now no, no i i i had i was skilled or training um, before I became a member of the EWF. Talk, talk. Because what happened, right? Yeah, talk to me about that part there, before I reached the yeah, EWF. Yeah, what, 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 what happened, right, when I left school at 16, I had uh, had CSEs. wasn't the best CSEs, but I had CSEs. Mm -hmm. My ambition was to be a mechanic, to get an apprenticeship, either with uh, the bus company or one of the big car companies, um, to get an apprenticeship, five or six year apprenticeship, you get a good salary, you get trained well, and you, you, you're secure in a, in a job. But that didn't, that wasn't happening for me. So when I left school, couldn't get no work, I ended up in a training center. Um, the training center had jobs that they were offering training jobs for ones who had CSE. I was the only one that had a CSE qualification in, in, in the training center. So I applied for the job, got the job. After the first two weeks, my intention was to leave the job. But my mother, she said to me, she said, no, you need to stick it out because my my mom um she went through a lot um when she came to, to england in terms of work See. but at that time she could go from one job to the other if it didn't suit her if, so, if the foreman spoke to her a certain way you know what i mean she could pick up her bag and, and leave and she'd get a, a, another job somewhere else in the same day in the same hour sometimes so I'm coming from a, a working class background, my parents. So yeah. my, my mom really encouraged me to, to stick it out. And I did. And um, uh, and so today I'm here in Ethiopia. I'm a qualified um, mechanical engineer. I'm a scientist in um, metal finishing. You know, I mean, I've got a lot of skills behind me. Um, and it all started from that time. I could have left because when the man put the broom in my hand, I wanted to just give him back. I say, yo, don't bother with that. I didn't come here to sweep my floor. Mm. But, you know what I mean? My parents were there. They encouraged me. Uh, and I stuck it out where a lot of my brethren didn't stick it out. And said, no, we ain't coming here to make no teeth in a man and, and go buy um, sandwiches for man. You you others and, and not learning anything. But I stuck it out. And uh, that's why I'm here today. Different and separate apart from the discrimination of of your skin color zane did you think the locks had something because they must be a young rasta them time there. yes yes we we, 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 we at, at that time there you know what i mean i'm leaving at home you know what i mean you wet your hair you pat it down pat it down pat it down so so it looked like you know a little small afro because my dad was one of them and um, as soon as school holiday come you go into the barber 
if you're not going to the barber, there's a man, a, a man down the road. We saw a man down the road, a black man who used to cut people's hair, See. and that's so that's that was the that was the trend. So coming through as a youth now to come home and and, and you're wearing locks, it's like big argument I want in the house. You over so. Those are the tribulations that, that we had to suffer as youths because we had no free speech. Our parents didn't want us to have the free speech because they know they they went through all the races and they went through um, so much things and they didn't want their, their their children to go through the same thing. See it, but you know, I mean, it, it was inevitable that we would go through the same thing and even worse. Uh, at least my parents um, were, were able to find work um, and and make a living and look after their their family and look after you know. We they expected us to to go further than what they did, but once we left school, and and the realization of that hit us is like wow, this is not easy enough. You know, so the Rastafari gave us that energy and that strength um, to overcome um, these obstacles that were put in front of us by the system. Mm. Like it wasn't nice. It wasn't pretty for us. Or all, all, all the government would do is give us a little dull money, and at that time it was like what seven pound. Um, seven pound a week, or something like that. You know what I mean, and and that's what a lot of ones were living on. Wow. And you had different Rasta um, brethren. You know, in, I'm, I'm from Birmingham, so you had areas uh, Hansworth, you know, Ladywood, Sparkbrook. You know, what I mean, Smedic, and you know, ones would um, meet and reason, beat drum. You know, what I mean, bon herb, and and contemplate on. How are we going to repatriate? Mm. How how are we going to fight the system? Because the system can't well didn't want to be accountable. We want to make the system accountable. The system wasn't on that one at all. All they wanted was for us to enter the workforce, build up um, the economy, build up um, the structures. Mm -hmm. So you found that most black youths had vocational skills, mm. either plumbing, carpentry. You know what I mean? That that was it. To go any further, you know, doctors, scientists, um, psychologists, wasn't really um, on the agenda for for us as youths leaving school at that time. It was very difficult. We all had aspirations leaving school. We all wanted to succeed. Um, we all wanted. We all knew what kind of jobs we wanted to get into. But once you got out there, the competition for these jobs was so so high. You just couldn't get it. And being black was hard and then to have dreadlocks on top of that mm. made it even harder Church, nobody yeah. wanted to know the rest of man you know i mean we, we we were the bottom of the pile the troublemakers oh we don't want no rasters here mm. you're just gonna smoke ganja and you're just gonna talk um, black consciousness and revolutionary talk and you know kill this person and kill that person and all these things was what was in the mind of, of the system and, and when i say the system you know i mean the teachers um, the foreman, the owners of the companies, you know, I mean, even down to shopkeepers, you know, I mean, everybody was against us. So we had to find our way. And we did successfully. We united amongst ourselves as youths. Um, we all went to different schools uh, who lived in, the, in, in a certain area. But you see, once school was done, we'd be in the park, you know, we playing football together, we're, 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 you know, doing so much activities together. My parents were a member of um, a black organization um, and I was part of that as a youth, you know, I mean, in the youth um, group. I, I, when I was about 16, I became a youth leader um, in that association. And so I had a, a very good um, upbringing in terms of understanding why black people should be together. Mm -hmm. we, we was able to, my parents um, and, and their colleagues were able to get their own building. You know, I mean, they used to keep dances on a regular basis. Um, I was part of the Domino team. We used to travel all over the place playing Dominoes. You know, there was so much things and activities going on. That kind of shaped me into to where I am today. And when it, when it comes to organizing and centralizing and working um, in a team and, and working for the collective. Because that, that's what, was, what I saw when I was growing up. Yes, sir. Within my own family. Um... So, all right, because, you know, within Rastafari today, Zine, they, they would say, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I, I, I like to say, in my father's mansion, there are many houses. See, because a mansion could hold 
some houses, but I can't see how a house I go really hold a mansion still it doesn't add up. But anyway, um which what 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 house did attract the eye? Because we have twelve tribe, we have Naya Bingi, we have Bobo Shanti and you know we have different different um but those are the, the, the main three groups that really stand out within Rastafari. What what we, we, which out of them did um, attract the eye? Well, before when, when you say attract now, before it even gets to the attraction side, you always you, you had different groups of, of brethren mm. that dealt with different ideology as youths. See, you always so you had the jungle, you had you know Rima, you had certain names that we adopted in Birmingham for in different areas. You know, so we're living in a concrete jungle. It's not like, say, we're in Jamaica where we can go to the hills or we can go to the beach and we can free up and, and, and this and that. We're living in a concrete situation, a concrete jungle. So living in that concrete jungle, we had to stick together. So it wasn't about 12 Tribe. It wasn't about um, Naya Bingi. It wasn't about the Bubba Shanti House at that time. It was about Rastafara and how you understood Rastafara. Mm-hmm. And as the journey as the journey continued, and and you and you want to ev- uh, elevate um, your thinking to help others, that's when you start to look at the different groups or mansions that were out there. Um, you had the Twelve Tribe um, organization, which we we knew about, um, but we we felt as youths that being a member of, of, of the Twelve Tribes was really something that you could go home to your parents and say, well, yes, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a member of the Twelve Tribes and. We can sit down on Sunday and still eat your chicken and drink your drink. and But we were radical in that sense where that wasn't what we wanted as Rasta. That wasn't the, the, the liberty that we was living. So <clears throat> the 12 tribe was never, well, for me, it didn't register with me to be a part of the 12 tribes. Um, the Naya Bingi was more to what we was as youths were, were more uh, into in that sense. You know what I mean? Cause we, we didn't have no repeater drum or no bass drum or no fundy drum. We had pots. You know that? Mm. I remember as, as a youth, we go around to a brethren's yard, we put together, we'd buy a quarter of weed, a half, half ounce of weed, and we'd spend the afternoon there. And we're, and we're beating pots. You know that? Well, that, that's, that? That was our hills. For we oh, to be in the hills, we, we, we'd have to be in a concrete setting. That, that's, how, that's how we function. And, and, fr- and from there, you know what I mean? You, you go to session, you go to the different um, dances. Uh, I was even in a sound system, built my own sound system with, with my cousins and, and, my, and my brethren, and we used to play out with other sounds. So uh, the weekend starts in Birmingham, I don't know for anywhere else, but the weekend starts fr- uh, Thursday. Thursday, you're, you're in the pub and, uh, you know, you start off the weekend, uh, sound system up clear, and you know what I mean? You, you, you're there with your brethren and, and you're gone. Friday night now, there's another um, clubs um, that were, were operating, some in Hansworth, some in Sparkbrook, some in Nietzsche's, different places where man used to go. And then after that, on a Friday night, Friday night, man gone to um, Midnight Movie. And then from from Midnight Movie, you're watching your Kung Fu movies and other things. And then from there, you're going to blues. And then from blues, you walk home. And that's a Friday. And then Saturday, it's the same thing. And then Sunday, you, 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 you know, well, me and my brethren on, on a Sunday, we'd go pictures. You over. So that's the that's that's how the weekend used to be for for, for us. Um, that was our reality. We wanted to to live the best life. We wanted to have mm-hmm. the best enjoyment. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to be because we we come to sixteen and seventeen that we still have to stay home. It was very difficult to get parents permission to go out. So not just me, but a lot of brethren and sisters used to sneak out. You know what I mean? When your parents are gone to bed, you jump through the window and you're going about your business and then you come back home before they wake up. And that was it. But once um, you get to 17 and 18, you know what I mean? You, you, you get more freedom. You can go out to the more. You start to have a girlfriend. and You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and you start to live your life a little bit more. You take on the responsibility. You, have, you, 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 know, you start to have your youths and you, you, you're looking for um, accommodation for yourself and, and your family and you're looking for work so that you can provide for your family. So we want to do all the things that everyone else is doing. But it was very difficult. Not saying it wasn't difficult for everyone else, but 
uh, as a black man, as a black youth, it was very difficult. But we, but we got through and we survived. Yes, I. Yeah, man, give thanks. Yeah. Weather in the storm, you know? Yeah. Yeah, give thanks. Yes, far I saw. And go on, all right, go on, sorry. Yeah, so so from 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 that from from all those things, you know, what I mean, we're very active. You know, what I mean, we're out there in the community, and we're helping in the community as much as we can. Um, we're 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 moving together. Um, we're we're looking after our own security because security work was one of the main things that we had to maintain. Mm. Because without security, you ain't got nothing. You know, so we have to look after each other. You know, what I mean, there were times where uh, I remember one time where. Um, I think it was in Smallheat, an area where um, some youths, uh, uh, you know, accosted a, a black woman, and everybody came out. You over? Mm. We we have to defend our own. That's you true. Over? And that's kind of lacking um, in, in these days and times. And that was the radical side of us coming out. We have to defend ourselves. We, we we are our own police. We have our own security. We now have to go to Babylon to, to, for our, our security. If someone do it wrong, we deal with them. Simple. Yes, I. Yes, I. So, um, I know from them time, they know, because I was speaking about the um, coming into the, the, the EWF or Virgin, um, linking the eye, Zane, and you yes. went there, you went there once. All right. I, 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 I don't want to speed up the reasoning, but, um, what what really in 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 Naya Bing, you know, Zin, cause them time they they are young and you know. What 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 really what part of Naya Bing, you know that really um. I would say attract the eye still, you know what I mean? What 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 what? Because we know Naya Bing to be more a radical side of Rastafari then, you know. A side where, um, not even my side still, but Rastafari's who them well serious, and many consider them to be the the, the warriors within Rastafari. Um, what 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 really did attract the eye? You know, because as I say, um, twelve tribe probably wouldn't be an organization where the eye would have um join up with, um. I don't know probably bubble also but what what really attracted the eye to 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 naya being you know that align with the eye okay um well we, we're we we're, we're coming from you know as black youths um in in england our parents introduced us to music mm-hmm. so music was always on the go playing all the time my parents had parties in the house we like I said, I was part of an association with, uh, that my parents were involved with. So music was always there. And then I, I came across um, an album, Groundation album. And that album, you know what I mean? It, it, it got to the heartbeat. You got to understand your own heartbeat. And with that uh, heartbeat, um, you can meditate. You burn a draw, you open up your mind, and you can meditate. So that that's, was my first encounter with, with the drums. Mm. And from, from there, you get to understand the liberty. And then from the liberty now, you get to understand that the Nyabingi at that time was a theocratic order. So it was more based on the Old Testament, not not so much on the New Testament. Once we, we, we had no time for the New Testament. But the Old Testament, that's where the Nyabingi, you know I mean? That was the influence of, of the Nyabingi because when, when you go into the church, the Methodist Church or Catholic Church or any other church, it's mainly based on the New Testament and not so much on, on the Old Testament. But the Old Testament, you got to understand a little bit more about where you came from, whether you understood it or not, but you got a, you got a better understanding of the Scripture through the Old Testament. Mm. And that was coming from um, the Nyabingi at that time, which was more theocratic in its order. Um, the liberty... You know, what I mean, um, uh, yeah, how you eat, how you dress, um, all, 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 of, all of those things was was influenced to me from from the Naya Bingi House. So I had a, a real influence from the Naya Bingi House more than anywhere else at that time. Um, I, I knew nothing of the Bubu Shanti. Bubu Shanti is something that you know kind of sprung up um, in the 80s. 
See. For, for me, still, before that, I had no idea of the Bubba Shanti. It was either 12 tribes or, or Nyabingi. And, and that was and that was a thing. Mm. And, you know, I mean, the, the Nyabingi house was established in, in Birmingham at, at an early stage. And a lot of ones gravitated to that. So we keep bingies. You know what I mean? You go to the bingie, you free up yourself, you free up your mind, and you get enlightenment. And, and, and that's what the mind needed at that time. So that that's... I gravitated more to the bingy house and even today I gravitate to, you know when it comes to mansions as our people call mansions I would more gravitate to the to the bingy house more than the 12 tribes are um, the, the bubble yes. uh, a lot of my family are, are members of the 12 tribe um, I have bridge into a, a, a bubble shanty and it doesn't stop us from communicating and and reasoning and and you know what I mean mm-hmm. celebrating life true but for me personally the Nyabingi um, I had a more of a call in towards the Nyabingi than to anywhere else and at that and at that time the knowledge wasn't that great the knowledge increases within time you know um, but the music w- was the influence I mean you know, every Thursday <clears throat> you get paid on a Thursday them time they get paid cash so you're straight into the record shop and you buy your pre, pre-release um, albums, or you buy your pre-release 45s. You buy all, all, all of the, um, you know, the artists at that time. And at that time, all those albums was actually the Bible. You know, the ones were singing about the Bible, even from. And I didn't realize it at the time that my parents' music collection was vast. And um, Justin Hines and the Dominoes, for example, when you listen to um, to, to, to Justin Hines, it's like you're reading the Bible. Yova, and then you had culture, you had burning spear, you know. What I mean, all the, all all their songs were spiritual songs that that related to the Bible and and related to the prophecies that are in the Bible. Because the church doesn't teach you about the prophecies; they don't tell you to look in earth to see the prophecies. And that's the teaching that that, really? that, that that's lacking um, within the you know um, the churches at, 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 at that time. It's probably still the same thing now. But the prophecies don't get, you know, reason done. <clears throat> yeah. So the prophecies um, that um, were in the Bible had to had to come out. Ones had to understand them. And for me, the Rastafari uh, movement was a way for me to understand the prophecies. Um, you know, the ending of time. You know, what I mean, um, the Godhead. You know, what I mean, um, you know, His Majesty. All those things are revealed in the Bible. And you can't just read things in the Bible and not look for them in earth. And once you look for them in earth and you find them, you can say, yes, that prophecy was real. It means something. It may not mean something to, to others, but for an individual, it means something. So from, from you understand the prophecy now, that's when you start to really, your knowledge starts to increase. Let me ask the idea this. Um... Where where does the, the the narrative come from then? Um, that that um, burn the Bible and and, and these things. I, I mostly hear um, that narrative still from from one who align as 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 Bingi still. I, I mostly hear that narrative coming up as 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 a younger one still. Where where do you think that narrative well, come the, from? Yeah, the inconsistencies in, in in the Bible is the is the main thing, mm. because we as you now we we're, we're we're following the prophecies that we see happening on Earth, whereas the Bible when you when you read certain parts of the Bible it, it contradicts itself. Yeah. So so when you're young and you're radical, you know you you can't accept that. You know, I mean, the Bible will say certain things like you know, I mean, um, Adam and Eve, for for example, it it, it suggests that there was, um, you know brothers were sleeping with with sisters and and all these things you over so we couldn't accept those things so therefore we bond the bible but when one's bond the bible you know it's not the whole bible that one's burned you know because there are certain uh, morals and 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 certain spiritual things that one's having themselves without the bible you over so and the bible you get to understand right it's a selection of books and in those selection um, of, of books, one book one book contradicts the other book, and it's like, well, this book said this book says this, and then another book contradicts that, and it's like, 
you get confused. So instead of being confused, you put it to one side. So when you put it to one side now, ones would say, well, you're born in the Bible. Which well, yes, I am born in the Bible. Right? But ones need to understand what that actually means. Mm. You other, because, you know, we, we, we're coming, especially um, amongst your parents. Your, pa- your, your parents instill what they believe is right. So that when you have your children, you can instill what you believe is right to them. Not what they say was right. But the, the, the concept of them um, teaching us what they feel was right mm. was enough for us to know that when we have children, we have to do the same thing. Yeah. So my parents are not going to tell me about the contradictions in the Bible, but I can tell my children about the contradictions in the Bible so that they can understand it for themselves. True, true, true. That makes sense. Yeah, make a lot of sense. Yes, far right. Yeah, because... <clears throat> It always um come weird to I when me hear one said them burn the Bible and then within another breath they would be quoting something or you know what I mean referring to something from from the Bible. You know what I mean? So you know it kinda did <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and, and then and then the next thing as well, you know what I mean, once you become revolutionary in your mind, you know, right, it's very difficult to, to accept the Bible for what it for what it is and for what people tell you the Bible is. Yeah, as a revolutionary, that the, the Bible don't make no sense. Mm-hmm. You always because it's a struggle, and we uh, and we know so we're, we're coming from from Africa. You know what I mean? No one uh, didn't have to really tell you that. You know what I mean? Once you're in school, you know, especially when um, you know when I was about 15 and Roots came on the TV, that was it. You knew you were black. There was no there was no if or but about that. You got to school, you know, you, you all of a sudden you get a, a nickname Chicken George or this and that. And then you get into problem because a man go call you them thing that you, you know what I mean you, you you snap and you know you go you go on a way mm-hmm. and bring trouble on yourself. You over so the, the the Bible was used. It's a tool that was used, right? And it was used for many things. It was used to entrap um, um, ones in, you know our forefathers in Africa, and it was also used on on parents were coming from generations of slavery. You over so it's a tool and it's whether you want to use that tool or not. And as a youth I chose not to use that tool. I understood the Bible as much as I could, you over, but it wasn't something that I was using as a tool for myself. I was too revolutionized at that time. It was like why we have to go tear down this place, you know, because we now get what we what we forget. You know what I mean? If I can't succeed here, how are my children going to succeed? It was not in itself. It's that revolutionary spirit that, that was that was in us. Even though we had little understanding, but one thing we, we understood, that we're revolutionaries. You know what I mean? Marcus Garvey, when we, when we read the philosophies and opinions of Marcus Garvey, when we read about um, Malcolm X, you know what I mean? Um, by any means necessary. You know what I mean? The, the, these are the things we could relate to. And it's what you relate to is what you you know you gravitate and hold on to, you know what I mean. And, and the Bible wasn't doing it for us like it was doing for our parents. All the Bible done for our parents was to keep them humble and keep them in place. Mm-hmm. Where we we as youths now we said no we we we're not into that. How 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 come how come we can't walk down the street? How come we can't go and dance and dance with no woman? You over how 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 come when we go to a pub everybody want to pound? You know what I mean? The first thing we we used to do as as youths, as, as soon as you go into any kind of club, the first thing you do is to find out where the exit uh, is to get out the place and 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 look what you can use as a weapon if you need to use it. You know what I mean? Th- those were standard standard things. You over. And then you know once we became more revolutionary, now we stopped going to those places. You over, and we got dance. You know what I mean? Sound system I string up, sound system I play. Everybody is having fun. There's no big hole in in the middle of the of the dance hall because everybody's on the dance floor. Everybody's dancing. You you leave from the dance with, with your bread in and all you're talking about how much women you dance with that night there. You know what I mean? And 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 that was it. And and you reach home safely. Whereas if you go into other environments, you know what I mean, you have to fight your way out. And some of us, you know, there were some bread that, that like that, that kind of vibe. You know, because we can hold our own. We, we, we're not weak. We can hold our own. 
if it's yes, if it's kicks and blows and, and and beating, then that's that's it. That's <laughs> that's the way how it went. Mm-hmm. We have to. You, you can't just tech 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 all the time. You have to give back to. So we used to give back, not just in words, but in deeds too. So that that was that was the the, the liberty that I came to in the seventies, leaving school. You know, as and all of, all of those experiences, you know, you you start to really question yourself. You, you start to question family. You start to question cousins. You start, you know, you start to question so much different things. So till you get to the realization, you know, something. I have to get out of this place. But how are you going to do it? You know, and the, and the liberty um, of, of, of Rastafari coming from the Naibingi house gave you that spiritual understanding that the church couldn't give. And 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 that's where where it's at. You can't break the spirit. You can't break the faith. You know, I mean, if, if it's tribulation, man, if you got children, it's tribulation. Them time they will not eat meat, we not eat this, we not eat that. Man, I, man, I drink Ribena and, and custard cream biscuit and all them things there. You know what I mean? Because you, you, you're not going to, you know, you, you stop eating certain foods that your parents were preparing. Mm. So you go home to your mother and you say, look, mom, I can't eat out of that Dutch pot no more. Man. Then you better take yourself out then. That was the vibe. Mm-hmm. That's true. So that was, that, that, that's the liberty. You know what I mean? And, and that liberty was coming from the theocratic order of the Nyabingi. And in Birmingham, um, it was coming through the music. We had no hills to go to. Well, there were hills, but you know, I mean, once you go up there, you know, I mean, you, you stay up there for a couple of hours, you freeze, you freeze, and you get cold, and you have to, you know, leave and go a yard. It's not like Jamaica where the sun is shine or Africa where the sun is shine. You can stay in the hills out there. You can go to the hills in the summertime, but in the wintertime, you're stuck in your yard, mm-hmm. in a concrete setting, and you have to make the best of what you of the surroundings you have, and that's what we did. <clears throat> if it's to take a yard, if it's to capture a yard, we'll capture the yard. And then when you capture the yard now, the housing association would, you know, they, they they didn't really give too much problem because we're there securing the houses for them. You know, so we went through all those kind of, you know, I mean, all those kind of um, experiences to bring us to where we are today. First of so it wasn't right. pretty and it wasn't easy, but we survived. Yes, I. So, all right, talk to me about... Um getting into the ethiopian world federation because they i was saying um a virgin invited the eye yeah <clears throat> at that time i'd left home i had my queen i had my first youth i was working and repatriation was on my mind you know business like how are we gonna me and my family how are we gonna repatriate so once i went to an ewf meeting i got to understand so well this organization was established by his imperial majesty for black peoples of the world um, uh, we, we need to organize and centralize um, so that we can, you know, work together and get out. So that was my first encounter. Once I went to the first meeting, I became a member of the organization. And from there, um, I was an executive member, uh, first vice president. And then um, after that, I became the chaplain um, of the organization for about eight years uh, in Birmingham. You we know, was dealing with the, um, the moral tone and the spiritual needs of the, of the members. Um, which meant, you know, me interacting um, with the members um, all the time, mm. um, doing activities with them all the time. The organisation is, is set up in a way, right, where <clears throat> there are committees, and I was um, the chair of, of many committees. I was the chair of the Complaints and Grievance Committee. I was the chair of the Housing Committee at, at times. I was the director of the, um, our um, orchestra um, band, um, you know, Diana Dims, uh, Naya Bingi. Um, band, you know what I mean. So, I was always active um, within the organisation. We used to, um, you know, we used the community centre to keep meetings. After that, we we would use um, different places to keep meetings, and I was always on the front line, um, always making sure that we had somewhere to meet, always making sure that um, the house was prepared for meetings. I'd st- I'd go early, I'd leave late, I'd give my time, you know what I mean, and and. I became more and more active within the organization and at the same time understanding um, the need um, why we need to organize and centralize that's the only way we're going to get out of the system um, so that was my first uh, encounter seeing so all right um 
so at the time how, how did you saw uh, the, the 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 organization um within itself because uh, i guess probably it's a rasta virgin that invited the eye to to the yes. organization um w- w- how did you see did you see it as a rasta organization or an organization not with the knowledge that you have now and over the the passage of time but mm-hmm. did you see it as 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 an organization for black people of the world all black people or just a rasta thing? well the, well the, the ewf is a black organization right mm-hmm. And you have different locals within that come on under that. So for us in in Birmingham, we we had a local, and and the majority of members were Rasta. So therefore, we adopted the Rasta principles, and 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 such like. There were members um, in in the in our local who weren't Rasta. You over so, but the majority of members were Rasta. But we always understood that it wasn't a Rasta organization per se. It was a black organization. But in our settings, uh, in Birmingham, the majority of members were Rasta. So uh, our house rules, for example, were, um, you know, based on on Rasta principles. You know what I mean? So uh, you had other locals in in different parts of the world where um, it wasn't, the majority weren't Rasta. You know, but but for for my experience um, coming into the EWF, as a black man, as a black youth at that time, the majority of, uh, of the members were Rasta. And there were Rasta um, Bridgings and Sistrians who were going through the same experiences that I went through. And they were asking the same questions too. And they became members. At, at one time, we had over 250 members uh, in Birmingham. You know what I mean? All young Rassies. Um, there was no, um, um, like say, there was no 12 tribe um, HQ um, in Birmingham. But there was a, um, a EWF local in Birmingham, Yoba. So you, you found that you know, most uh, radical. Yes, yeah, I, I pray the, I don't want to cut the eye, in. but you see that is. I think that is important. That is a important thing that the eye does um, say a while ago. There was a EWF Zin local oh. organization that was there other than say a naya bingi per se or a 12 tribe or a bubba shanty or, you know what i mean but there was a mm-hmm. ewf and i think that is important to highlight you know what i mean because yeah because of the narrative that um the organization is a rasta thing and to a rasta um you know, enough people wouldn't want to um you know be involved because the rest of them smoke weed and them talk about celasi and all of them thing there so that is just important to i feel you know kind of highlight still you know what i mean yeah. we never really want to interrupt the eye but you know we just pick up on that 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 is important to highlight it yeah. was a well well in in, in birmingham there, there, were, there were several parallels for example you um, the EWF was established uh, in Birmingham, but once the EWF was established in Birmingham, the Nyabingi House was also established in Birmingham too. Okay. You over so, and then um, there were the the twelve tribe. I wouldn't say the twelve tribe was fully established in, in Birmingham, but there were um, members of the twelve tribe who were in Birmingham, but they couldn't for for I don't know the reasons why, but they couldn't make it like how it was in in Manchester and and, and in London. So you had two prominent um, group, um, groups um, in Birmingham. You had the EWF and you had the Nyabingi House. But the Nyabingi House, um, one's referred to them now as a mansion, mm. where the EWF is not a mansion. The EWF is an organization. So as an organization, as a young Russ now, yeah, because of the connection of the, of the EWF um, with His Majesty, and the reason why the EWF um, was established, once you, you, you get a full understanding uh, of that, then naturally you become a member uh, of the EWF. You had members from the Nyabingi House in Birmingham that were members of the EWF. Being a member uh, of, of, of the Bingi House didn't stop you from being a member of the EWF. You understand? So, But the EWF was more of a... Um, the constitution of the EWF is more business-like. It's more on an administrative level. You know what I mean? It's, it's a balance... And between the physical and the spiritual, 
um, where where the, 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 the Bingi House was a, theater, a theocratic order at that time. Didn't really um, adhere too much um, to, to administration. I'm not saying that the, the, the Naya Bingi House didn't have an administration because in Birmingham at that time, um, the prominent um, business owners and shop owners and, and entrepreneurs were coming from the Bingi House too. Mm. You know, so it, it was, um, it was, it was, there was always that parallel, but there was, there was a, a mutual respect. So there wasn't a fight um, against the Bingi House or, or the, the EWF. And then at the same time, you had different groups of, of Rasta who were fighting against Bingi and fighting against EWF. So that became a, a tug of war as well. You know, because you got to remember uh, in, in them time there, from from you say that you're, you're dealing with his imperial majesty, you have to defend it. And if you couldn't defend it, you, 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 you're you going to get blood out. You offer me a deal with you. You're going you're gonna, to, you know, you have to be strong as a youth saying that you're Rasta. You can't just say you're Rasta. Like, Today now you can say you're Rasta. Anybody can say you're, you're Rasta, but as a youth, for me coming up, you couldn't just say you're Rasta and couldn't defend it. You have to be able to defend it. You over, and that's verbally. Man, man will drape you up and say, "Well, you know, what you are deal with." You have to, you know, be able to tell a man what you are deal with. That that's how that's how radical we were. It wasn't somebody could just come along and say that they're Rasta and do any all kind of misdemeanors and all kind of foolishness. Now we were monitoring our selves mm. we were monitoring our movement you know but we didn't want no one to infiltrate it we didn't want no one to come and stifle us from from doing what we're supposed to do so we're very radical in in, in our stance and that's how it was so how, how did one separate you know the two now um you know the ewf you know doing the works of the ewf and still operate as as um still being a rastafari or a naya Binge. okay i'll put it this way right i, I was a chaplain mm. um for the ewf uh, in in birmingham for many years and the chaplain's duty is to deal with the moral tone and to deal with the spiritual needs of the members so as a chaplain now i have to know the members if you don't know the members, then you can't deal with their spiritual need. And if you don't know the members, then you can't talk to them about their morals. Mm -hmm. So there was that spiritual side within, within the organization. But the the, chap, the chaplain was, was there not just to um, promote his majesty or to speak about his majesty, but it was to adhere to the spiritual needs of the members. So if the majority of members are Rasta, then naturally as a chaplain, have to deal with that if the majority of, of uh, if, if there were um, christians in there or if there were muslims in there you still have to deal with with that you also not deal with so it wasn't it wasn't a case of well um being a member of the ewf means that you know you can't be a, a member of the um bingi house or you can't be a member of the 12 tribes or you can't be a member of the Bukashanti. no it wasn't like that it was about an organization that was there for black peoples of the world um to to empower ones um, to, to make sure that the, uh, the community develops and, and to assist. And that's what the organization was about. But it just so happens that in Birmingham, the majority of members were asking. That's it. Seen. Yes, I. Yes, far right. Yes, sir. all right. Um, so with, with, with the EWF now, seen. I know they are, as they I said they have been doing a, a, a lot of work in 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 Birmingham and thing, but pan 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 an international level, why was there such a dormancy um, with the organization? Well, there wasn't there wasn't a dormancy, mm. all right, because locals were functioning. I, I I'm I'm a member from from Birmingham. Um, there was um, um, locals in in, in London. Um, what what took, what what happened right was that ones in London um, kept um, a meeting, um, invited all the Rassis. Um You had a, a group called the Repat um, Research and Re Repatriation Committee, which called a meeting and uh, introduced the EWF as, as a way of um, bringing all the different groups together to work in one accord and and to bring about the unity that was needed to facilitate repatriation. So there was never um, um, a real dormancy 
in, on, on that level. There was a dormancy on the international side of the organization, but in terms of um, a local, um, the locals were active around the world. You had a local in, in Jamaica, you had a local in France, you had a local in Birmingham, you had a, a local in London, um, you had a, um, a, a local in America at that time too. So the locals were functioning, but the locals were functioning without an international head. So when, when one say that there was a dormancy, the dormancy is more on the international um, side. Um, from the, the, there were locals um, established in, in, in London in the 60s, you know what I mean? And members um, from, from that local, you know what I mean? They had a unit in, in Birmingham, you know what I mean? So the Federation was always active in, in Birmingham from, from 74, from uh, as far as I can uh, think back, you over. So, mm. but on an international um, side, that, that's where the dormancy was. See you. Um, and and, I, and I, would, mm. I, I, I need to I need to say this too. Um, the Ethiopian World Federation was established um, because of the um, invasion of uh, Italy in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, Italy was threatening the, the sovereignty uh, of Ethiopia, and black peoples around the world rose up and wanted to defend Ethiopia. Yeah, Ethiopia was the only place in in uh, in Africa that hadn't been colonized, so it was you know. It was war, you know. Italy, Italy declared war, not just on Ethiopia, but on um, black people all, all around the world. So fundraising took place in, in America, mainly, um, to to raise funds um, for for the cause. A lot of Ethiopians, I mean, sorry, a lot of um, black Americans um, tried to sign up um, to come to fight on the front line uh, in Ethiopia. But a lot of them were American citizens, and as an American citizen, uh, that's not allowed. You, you can't do that. So fundraising was, was being done at that time in in in, the, in, 19, in, in 1935 around them time there, and then at the same time, the um, Marcus Garvey um, movement was wasn't so strong wasn't as strong as it was. Um, America was just coming out of depression too, so you know everyone was having a hard time. You over so. A group, uh, prominent um, um, black people from America, from Harlem mainly, travelled to England to meet with His Majesty to, you know, ask for assistance and to explain to His Majesty um, the love that the black people around the world had for Ethiopia and wanting to assist. Out of those series of meetings that took place um, in in England in Bath, His Majesty um, put together his idea of an organization that could um, solidify and and, and and organize ones in a better way. So um, His Majesty sent his nephew and, and um, uh, his physician, um, Dr. Malako Bayan, um, to America. But you've got to understand, you know, that His Majesty Emperor Ali Selassie I is a king of a sovereign country. And as a sovereign country, he's in exile, but he's still the king of a sovereign nation yes so as a king of a sovereign nation now he sent his physician and his nephew to america but when dr malaku went to america he was recognized as a prince because he was a prince so certain diplomatic um credentials that uh, other organizations would have to present um to the gov um, to the american government were wavered because of the, st uh, the status of um, um dr malaku bay so from from that from then the the organisation um, was established in 1937 to organise and centralise the fundraising um, efforts that were being um, done um, for Ethiopia. At that time, because of the depression and, and the poverty and, and everything that that was happening in America, you found you you find a lot of charlatans who would raise money and keep it for themselves, and that was one of the reasons why a delegation went um, to Bath. Um, in England to, 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 to meet with His Majesty because these things were happening. Funds were being centralised and sent to where it's supposed to be sent. So His Majesty put together the concept of the Constitution and Bylaws of the, of the EWF. He also gave um, the preamble um, for the EWF, We the Black Peoples of the World, in order to effect unity. You know what I mean? So. Um, 
all of that was was done, but it was done by a sovereign king, and um, Dr. Malaku Bain was a prince. So these are the these are the, the, the things that we need to fully understand. It wasn't just a simple organization that was set up as a Pan African organization. This was set up by a king, sovereign king. You understand? So that's that's why we as young Rastas gravitated towards the EWF because we understood the sovereignty. We understood the integrity. We have to defend the integrity and the sovereignty of Ethiopia. So His Majesty gave us the constitution to be able to do that. His Majesty gave two constitutions, one for Ethiopia. His Majesty said, well, okay, then um, the Ethiopian people um, want a constitution. So His, His Majesty gave the power to the people and, and he gave them a constitution. And then he also gave the power to the, the diaspora by giving a constitution too. So we respected that and we understood that and we carried ourselves in that diplomatic manner to promote the EWF, recruit, and uh, wants to be a part of the EWF so that we could repatriate home. That was that was a thought on our mind. Everything that we was doing as youths at that time was for repatriation. And and so, so ones need to understand the power of the organization. It's a powerful organization. And once you um, open the constitution um, of the organization, everything that you've asked, ever asked for is in that constitution. It's to study the constitution and it's to work the constitution. And that's what we did as youths. Yes, I. Yes, I. So you, you, you see that every Rasta should be a part of um, the EWF? Every Rasta, every black man. It's not just about Rasta. And this is the thing, that's why it's not a mansion. The, I mean, the Naya Bingi House would say that, you know, I mean, every Rasta should be a part of the Bingi House or the Bobo Shanti would say every Rasta should be a part of the the, um, the, the Bobo House or every um, one should be a, a member of the 12 tribe. But the EWF is about black people. So if you're a Rasta, if you're a radical, if you're a Pan-Africanist, if you're Afrocentric, you know, as long as you're black, then be a member of the organization it's not exclusive to rasta and this is the and this is the misconception that ones have um, at the moment mm -hmm. everyone thinks that well the ewf is a rasta organization no it's not it was founded by his imperial majesty so you find that a lot of rastas gravi gravitated to that because the link with his majesty but it wasn't just for uh, at, at that time there was no rasta members of the organization in 1937 it was black people so this, this concept that ones have to say, well, oh, the, e, the EWF is a Rasta organization is because once, once they buck up on the EWF in certain areas or in certain countries, they've seen the majority of members as Rasta. So they automatically think, well, oh, this is a Rasta organization. You know? Yes, and sir. This is the, and this is the kind of um, information that I want to kind of put out there. You understand? If you're black, you know, you can be a member of the organization. If you're a Rasta, you can be a, a member of the organization. If you're Muslim, if you're a Pan-Africanist, you know, I mean, we, we all have the same things in common. And that's the liberation. You know, that's the revolutionary spirit. That That's working in, 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 in a positive way, more than to just be born in herb and burning down the system and just stopping in your yard, reading Bible and playing music. The EWF offered more than that. It gave you something that you, you, you could never have thought of as a youth. You know what I mean? So the organization is a black organization. I will say that firmly um, to once. Yes, I. Yeah, man. Give thanks. Give thanks for that. So talk to me about um, some of the works now that the I do um um, with the organization in Ethiopia. Okay, right. Now, being a member of the, of the EWF at a, at a young age, <clears throat> we we got to understand that His Majesty um, had given um, land uh, in Shashamani for the organization and for its members um, to come home and develop um, and, and develop um, the city uh, in Shashamani. So, um, in, say, 1992, I, I went to, to Ethiopia, Shashamani specifically, to defend the land grant. I didn't go there with no bag of money, you understand? Um, 
I just went there to defend that because um, you had the pioneers there. You had Mama Bar, Papa Bar, Brother Vin. Um, you, you had Brother Reed. You had um, Papa Solomon Wolf. You had Brother Moody. You had um, Brother Hillman, and and a few and a few others. And so we went there to to, do, to help them to defend the land because they were you know coming of age. And there was a whole heap of land. Five hundred hectares of the land was originally given. Um, the the Dirk um, regime had confiscated a lot of the land, but gave some land back to the pioneers because the the Dirk government said, well, you know, I mean the the Rastas or the EWF members in 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 Shashamani are more Ethiopian than the Ethiopians. So he gave lands back um, to one so that they could build a house and do subs subsistence farming. So as a youth, we went to defend the land to make sure that you know our land was secure and safe. So that was my first encounter uh, in Shashamani. So in Shashamani, I, I worked with the elders, um, the pioneers, and and as youths, we kind of took over the administration that the pioneers um, had established. They were called the Pioneer Settlers' Corps. Um, there was um, a Jamaican uh, embassy um, in uh, Ethiopia at that time, and any issues that the, com that the community had, they would be able to go to the Jamaican uh, embassy and. You know, I mean, and the Jamaican embassy would, um, you know, follow up and, and, and represent them. But once the Jamaican embassy left um, Ethiopia, they left a consulate, uh, an Ethiopian, uh, Otto Gabri, who worked very closely with the community too. But when I went to Ethiopia in 92, the Dirk government had been ousted. Um, a transitional government um, was in place. And it was um, time for the EWF administration to um, step up its gear. So as a, as a youth at that time, I was always part of the delegations that were um, meeting with the um, different governments, uh, officials at that time, um, to get back the land grant fully. Um, because at that time, um, the Dirk government had um, confiscated land from the church mainly and um, prominent business people and, and other um, um, companies. The, the Dirk government seized all property in Ethiopia. So once the transitional government came in, they established a, a committee where anybody that had had land um, confiscated or, or property confiscated from them could go to that committee and, and, and make application to get those properties or lands back. You find that uh, the Orthodox Church um, was able to get back a whole heap of land that was confiscated um, from them. Um, a lot of the um, companies were, were privatized um, by the, um, the transitional government. And we as the Ethiopian World Federation, we made our application to, to, to this um, same committee. Um, but at, the, at that time, there was a, a bit of a reluctance um, from the transitional government at that time to take on um, the um, land grant uh, in Shashamani. They recognized that a land grant was issued by the imperial government but it wasn't an issue that they wanted to take on. So you found that our applications were mainly a lot at the bottom of the pile, but we still um, was able to put our applications in um, and, and were invited to, to some meetings. And then what we decided to do <clears throat> was to register ourselves as the organization in Ethiopia to make our application more successful. Um, I was uh, a part of, uh, of that, um, putting a project together, um, going to, at that time, it was the Relief and, Rehab Re Relief and Rehab Rehabilitation um, Committee that was um, established at that time, and we registered with them. Um, but because of the, inf you know, the little misunderstandings and the dormancy that was taking place on an international level, we didn't actually get the support um, that was really needed. Um, so we kind of fizzled out a little bit at, 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 at that time. Um, but we was able to regain um, ourselves in, as an administration and continue up until this day making representation for the land grant. Um, at, at this present time, we, um, we have um, a great um, relationship with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In the um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, office, there is um, an America desk. And in that America desk, they deal with um, the Caribbean as well. So we was able to go there and, and uh, make our applications there also. Um, so through all, all, all of this going backwards and forth, because what we felt um, as a community that our rights weren't being respected. 
So we were able to put newspaper articles in the paper asking the government um, to respect um, our rights um, to live in Ethiopia and our right um, to our land grant. But the problem that we were having was that a lot of us didn't have no legality to be in the country. So if you haven't got a legality to be in a country, then there's not much you can actually do. Mm. All right. So after a lot of um, reasoning um, with um, the government, uh, I'd say over the last um, eight years, no, say the last, yeah, say about the last eight years, we've been able to get um, the Ethiopian government to recognize our community and to also give our community the required um, IDs um, to stay in the country. So now we're recognized as um, Ethiopian nationals um, with the ID to go with it. So Ethiopians who left Ethiopia during the Dirks regime and had families uh, in America and Germany and Australia and, and different places, their children um, had passports for those countries. Um, so the government, um, the Ethiopian government, were giving IDs um, which, to the Ethiopian diaspora. So we were able to, to gain the same IDs, but we didn't have to prove that our, at least our grandparents were Ethiopian. Um, the Ethiopian government wrote a, a separate directive for our community. Um, I was um, a part of that negotiating. Um, I was a part of making sure um, that our community um, benefited and uh, all um, Rastas in Ethiopia gained an ID. Um, the JRDC um, was also uh, involved um, with that. Um, started off working very closely with, uh, with the JRDC uh, on, this, um, on this. And then as the time went by, the JRDC went off on their own tangent and the EWF continued uh, making the representation. So you find now that the Ethiopian government um, said that anybody that, um, that is Rasta and wants to gain an ID, then they would have to come through either the JRDC or the EWF. See. So it, doesn't, it didn't mean that you had to be an EWF member. Mm. What we done as the EWF uh, in Ethiopia, anyone that was Rasta, um, we assisted them to get the ID, which was the instruction from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. When the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, started to look um, into um, Rasta, they done it on, on, on a view that it was a global um, organ, you know, global, um, or, I'll say, organization. Mm -hmm. So they put the parameters of what they see as being Rasta. We opposed a lot of the things that, that they wanted to put forward, um, but you know, we had to adhere to the instructions of, of the Ethiopian government. So now you find that at least maybe a thousand. Uh, 800 to 1,000 individuals, um, man, woman and child, have been able to gain um, their ID uh, in Ethiopia. And the ID, it's uh, renewable every five years. With that ID, you can work um, without a work permit. Um, you can establish um, your, uh, a business as a, a domestic investor. You can fly in and out of the country without a, um, uh, applying for a visa. You know, I mean, so those are the benefits of, of the ID. But we find that even the Ethiopian diaspora have been having problems accessing some of the benefits um, of the ID. Um, and, and that is the same situation that we as the Rasta community find ourselves in too. There's only certain parts um, of the benefits that we're able to access. So we, we're still lobbying <coughs> and working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to access um, the, the benefits. <coughs> and at the same time, the Ethiopian diaspora is also making application. Um, to the Ethiopian government um, to access um, the benefits too. So we're all working um, together um, in terms of accessing the benefits that are duly um, been um, given to us as, as the Rasta community. So that part of the work I still um, involved with. Um, every, so, every so often I take people to immigration, I do all the paperwork for them, I, I make the application for them. If I take you to immigration, you sit down, and when I've done what I uh, need to do, I will call you, you'll come in, take, they'll take your picture, you'll sign, you'll pay, and then you'll go. And that's it. So that's what the EWF, um, in, in terms of the ID, is involved in. And uh, I'm, I play an instrumental um, role um, within that. 
Um, I also um, a, a, a part of um, a group called the Ancient of Days, um, where we look after our elders in Shashamani. We found that a lot of elders um, come to Shashamani. Some of them don't have no family co um, connections. Um, some of them don't come with adequate funds and they find themselves vulnerable. Um, about 11 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, Congo Rupi from the Bingi House um, was in um, Shashamani and he found himself um, ill, ended up in hospital. And there was, there was nothing in place to, to look after him. Um, so myself and, and um, Idor, um, through Russ, Russ Wayne and a few other um, um, ones, we put this organization together. Um, I would say I'm the coordinator of the organization, of the um, project. It's called the Ancient of Days. <clears throat> we make sure that our elders are looked after. If they need to go to the doctors, we will take them. Uh, if they need prescriptions, we will pay for it. If they need operations, we will also pay for the operations too. You know, I mean, we take them on excursions. Um, we give them a stipend, you know, I mean, we provide food parcels for them. Um, we look after all their needs uh, as, as best we can. Um, so I, um, I've been a, a part of uh, that uh, as a coordinator for uh, many years. Um, um, we've, uh, we've been able to raise funds for, I would say, at least six um, of the elders um, for you know a wide range of, of, of different uh, operations, uh, mainly um, prostrate, um, which has been a problem um, that has run, uh, run through our community, um, different types of cancers. Um, lots of different ailments and we've been able to provide for our elders but one of the main things um, that we do also is to prepare our elders for, for when they sojourn um, so we'll make sure that you know it's dignified we'll make sure that we contact their families we'll make sure that we'll raise the funds um, to give them a good send-off you know what I mean so um, to meet with the ancestors so th that's a, another project um, that I do I'm involved in um, I also um, do free consultancy um, as well. Um, I try to um, give uh, ones the, the information that they need. My philosophy is the more information you have, um, the more choices you can make, mm. the more choices you have. True. Um, I like to give um, information to save people time and money also, uh, mainly um, within in investment. Uh, myself, um, I have my own company um, in Addis. I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, my business partner is an electrical engineer. We put our skills together and um, we put a proposal um, to the government. The government gave us a piece of land and we built a nice big factory and um, we manufacture machines. Um, we provide um, services, bending services, welding services. Um, you know, we make uh, different types of uh, machines, uh, industrial machines, food processing machines. Um, Seeing. Um, I shouldn't really say this, but um, I'm a, um, a, a, I'm a specialist um, within slaughterhouse equipment too. You know mm. what I'm saying? So there's a few slaughterhouses um, in Ethiopia which I, I uh, do the maintenance um, for them. Um, periodically, they will call me in to maintain uh, machines, and um, you know, I'll make um, boilers for boiling skins, and, and, and you know, do a lot of uh, other things. You have a lot of mills that produce, you know, um, wheat and, and, and different uh, types of uh, spices. Uh, I prefer, provide and, and make extraction systems for them also. So we're very versatile uh, in the work that we do. Um, we also have um, different uh, products that we um, sell um, and have in um, various supermarkets. Um, so we'll, and I've been running um, that company with my business um, partners for nearly 20 years now you know what i mean and we're still See? there we have uh, about nine workers um one of those workers uh, we sent um, to get his masters um, in business associations um we've had a uh, uh, three other um workers who have sent to college to learn engineering and now they teach me they're that good mm. you know what i mean so we we've contributed and we've given back and i try to encourage uh, wants to come to Ethiopia on an uh, entrepreneurial um, spirit more than um, just to come there on a spiritual vibe. Um, I try to encourage two or three or four brethren or sisters to get together, come to Ethiopia, establish a business. They don't have to be, all of them don't have to be in Ethiopia at the same time. You know, um, I encourage ones to um, go onto the uh, Ethiopian uh, embassy um, website, 
um, in whichever country you are, and you can get a, all the questions that you that you have about Ethiopia are there. Ethiopia um, is asking the diaspora to come and to substitute the market, because our research shows that 90% of all commodities coming into Ethiopia um, is paid by dollars. Um, so the government wants wants to come and establish business, especially in the agricultural sector, in the uh, food processing sector, engineering sector, um, science um, and, and technology, um, to come to Ethiopia and invest. Um, the Ethiopian government gives a lot of concessions, you know, mainly in tax and land. For example, if you uh, come to build a hotel, you'll get the land for free. You know, what I mean, um, for myself in manufacturing. Uh, we was able to get uh, tax exemption for the first three years of, of business. So there's lots of um, concessions being given um, to entice ones to come um, and establish businesses uh, in Ethiopia. So I, I play a, a major role um, with, with pro providing the information um, that ones need so that they can make that decision um, to come and do business in Ethiopia. Yes, um, I also um, DJ as well. Um, I um, promote um, um, dances too. Um, I was the manager of the first um, reggae nightclub um, in Addis Ababa, um, Ram Jam um, reggae nightclub, which was open six nights a week, and it's, it, it kept its word. It was Ram Jam. Um, it was established by myself and um, a twelve tribe brethren, um, Rash Judah. Because um, at, at that time, you had the EWF and you had the twelve tribes in, in Ethiopia, and the EWF will keep itself. To itself and the 12 tribe would keep itself to itself and the only time that the that you would see that the um, our pioneers would get together with, with others is uh, christmas or if someone dies or outside of that everyone's doing their own thing so what myself and a few other um, brethren who had come into ethiopia at that time we said look if you're 12 tribe you go and do your 12 tribe work if you're federation go and do your federation work but you see when it comes to night time we flex Mm. You know, what I mean, we, we socialize. Um, we we that, that's where the the real unity um, started to embrace itself in Ethiopia um, from us youths, twelve tribe youths, and and um, federation youths. And at that time, um, the Bubu Shanti uh, came into Ethiopia, and they became part of that uh, unity as well. Um, the the Nyabingi House um, also came into to Ethiopia and established themselves and became part of that unity. But I can say that I was there at the time and, and, and encouraged um, that unity. Because you, you, you had people would come from Sheshaman and come to Addis, do what they got to do by seven o'clock, they're gone to bed. Whereas I wasn't on that one. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in the capital city. I can't be going to bed at seven o'clock at night. <laughs> you always saw, you know, the, uh, and there were many ones who had the same feeling too. Mm. So we, you know, we used to meet, we used to advise each other, we used to socialize you know done with jar we play with music you know i mean we used to dj and all kind of different things we used but but it was there was a that collective um unity if i didn't have food my brethren had food if my brethren didn't have food i had food if i had money and my brethren didn't have money we all had money we shared things you know i mean that was the the vibe that we you know instilled amongst ourselves in addis ababa at that time even though um the pioneers they had a unity in, in Shashamani, but it wasn't strong enough because of the resources that they had, you know what I mean, to make it possible um, for, for I and I to just come in. So one of my major roles is to make sure that, um, to prepare the ground. We're there to prepare for ones to come in. But we don't want ones coming in, you know what I mean, and just be on a spiritual level. Or we don't want ones coming in to just be on a physical level. It has to be a balance. Mm -hmm. um, we're here to make sure that ones maintain that balance and make sure that ones don't get themselves into mischief. Um, so I wear many hats um, over the years and I'm happy to be here in Ethiopia. I continue um, the work, I continue um, reaching out to ones, I continue sharing information and um, making sure also that the EWF um, stands strong um, in Ethiopia in terms of representation um, for Sheshamon. Rastafari. A lot there still. 
Yes, I. Yeah, man, for real, <laughs> for real. Um, I could go. I could go on. I could go on for more still, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. At that. Yeah, man. Um, very, very um, informative and in, um, inciting, my lad. Um, talk to me a little bit about recent occurrence um, where part of the I think the Naya being a tabernacle was or a gate or something like that was destroyed. Uh, why yes um yeah yeah, Continue. Why, yeah why 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 it had come to that that you know it, it um part of the place had to be destroyed um well what i would say it came to what it came to because of maybe one or two people um from the administration from the road authorities mm-hmm. who were impatient okay there is a um, a master plan um for shashamani area going back to his majesty's time um the transitional government um at that time um changed a, a lot of the um, blueprint um shashamani um followed in that suit so at that time the transitional government was interested in land for urban and um industrial so a lot of uh, all the different uh, regions um in ethiopia were asked or told um, by the federal government to make sure that there is land for um, urban development and also land for um, industrial um, development. So you found that um, a lot of the uh, land grant um, that was given to us um, in 1948 by His Imperial Majesty um, was taken um, for that development. The the grounds where the um, tabernacle um, is was earmarked for part of that development also. There were issues um, going on for many years um, pertaining to um, the spot where the, the tabernacle was. Um, the women's um, quarters um, was taken. Um, a road um, uh, was, was put, put there and um, the rest of the grounds was left. Um, they came along um, and said that they uh, wanted to widen the road um, because Ethiopia is landlocked, everything um, moves around by road. Um, and Shashamani is the crossroad, so all tra- all traffic um, in Shashamani goes east, west, north, and south. It was the hub. So um, traffic uh, and the movement of traffic is a major part of the development uh, of Ethiopia. So to assist um, Ethiopia in, in their development, they needed to widen the road. So the Naya Bingi, um representatives went to Addis Ababa. They started off um, on a local level. They ended up in Addis Ababa to make an application and to say that no, um, they're not. Um, it's already been agreed before that the road wouldn't be widened. So why do you want to widen the road now? So while the um, the Nyabingi, um administration was waiting to get confirmation uh, from the road authorities um, in Addis Ababa. Um, whether that whether they was going to allow um, the road to be widened or they was going to put a stop to it, we didn't get to that stage because there was um, a person uh, in Cheshamani that got very um, impatient and decided to give the order to just move in one day on a Saturday morning um, and, and take down the wall um, and take um, lands from the tabernacle to widen the road. Protest um, was. Um, obviously um, put uh, up by the, the members of the Nyabingi. Um, and I must say that a lot of the members of the Nyabingi House in Shashamani are members of the Ethiopian World Federation too. <clears throat> so it was a joint um, um, effort um, by the, the whole community to put a stop um, to this. Um, but the damage had already been done. A rep- um, representation was <clears throat> sent to, to Addis to, to, to appeal um, on this. And uh, a response has been given back um, to the Nyabingi Tabernacle pertaining to, um, to their decision as to um, what, um, the, you know, they, their intention. But the damage has been done. The road has been widened, the, um, the, the, the guttering uh, um, for, for the water. Um, and all that has, has been put in place, but it's left um, the tabernacle in some kind of disarray in terms of um, their own plumbing and their own um, pipes and, and, and half of the, you know, part of the tabernacle itself um, being taken down. So the tabernacle is, is not round anymore. You understand? So 
Um, as far as I understand, um, the Ethiopian government um, is um, preparing themselves to compensate um, the, tab the tabernacle, um, but the damage has been done. The rest of the community worldwide, you know, I mean, um, took offence um, to what had been done uh, on our, our spiritual grounds. Um, that shouldn't have happened. And uh, as as you've seen, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of um, protests and uh, you know that was advocated. Um, we were able to, I was able to uh, work with the Jamaican consulate and with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to try to um, bring some kind of calm to the situation, uh, as well as others. Um, so things are, 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 have kind of settled down um, a lot. Um, the tabernacle um, needs to be, you know, repaired in, in certain things. Um, the administration of the tabernacle has put out um, a request of, of what's needed to be done. Um, the support of the rest of the community worldwide um, is there. Um, so we're looking for, you know, things to get back um, to how um, it was. But the Sheshamani administration is very sorry for, for what has taken place. Um, but like I said, the damage has, has already been done. So all, all we can um, do is to um, make a good situation at, um, that started off from something bad. Mm. Um, so we we haven't got into any physical uh, altercations uh, with the administration, um, but we've made our feelings, um, you know, very much um, felt. Yes, I. I hope that uh, gives you a better understanding yeah, man. of the situation with it. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, a clear understanding to 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 uh, um, take place and work on. Yeah, we give thanks. We give thanks to that, my lord. Yes, far right. Um. Yeah, as I say, you know, <laughs> I have a million and one question, but I know they are fairly Now, ask them, man. I want, to answer, I want to answer every question that you have because it's important um, that the information goes out and the clarity is given, you know what I mean? So let's not leave any stone unturned, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm here. Um, I want to um, respond to anything that um, um, that you, you want to, uh, to ask because it's very important um, that one's fully understand our situation um, uh, in Ethiopia. The... It's not an easy place um, to, to go to, to live. You find that because Ethiopia wasn't colonized, um, it doesn't have some of the easygoing kind of um, policies that other countries in, in Africa that were colonized have. So you have to be really thick skinned and you have to really have a high risk factor within yourself. Um, to come to Ethiopia to say you're going to live. It's not the easiest place to, to come to, but it's the best place to be right now. Rastafari. Um, there, 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 there is a lot of talks about um, land being sold mul multiple times. See? And that, 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 that is Rastafari um, being sold land and and then when they come back a few years later, um, the, the land sold to somebody else. Or what, what, what have the EWF done to kind of like um, curve that fraudulent activity within, um, within, within Shashamani? Okay, well, that is a serious question. I'm glad you started off with the most hard questions first. <laughs> but um, I'll say this. Okay, like I said, when I went to, um, first went to Ethiopia, um, the EWF um, pioneers um, had, a, a, had an administration. Um, there wasn't many ones coming um, to settle on the land at that time. Um, so we found that uh, the EWF um, was able to have um, a say into what took place on the land. But at the same time as the pioneers being there, there were also pioneers of the 12 tribes who were also there too. Um, and once the, um, the Dirk um, government had gone, um, the lands that the Dirk government had um, confiscated um, from the EWF um, were given to farmers associations. And the farmers associations, um, they were able to, they, could, they wasn't allowed to live on the land, but they was able to farm the land. And what happened, um, that the farmers were complaining that, you know, I mean, it was hard for them to bring their tools um, and things um, to the land to work. So they were given permission to build like sheds to 
you know, keep their tools and, and such like. So after when the, the Derg um, regime left, there was a real scramble for land. Ethiopians were taking land left, right and centre. Wherever they could take land, they were taking land. The transitional government was trying to curb that, um, but the damage had already been done. So in Shashamani now, the Farmers Association, um, the individual Ethiopian farmers, um, they were given designated pieces of land in their name. Um, and once the Dirk, um, government um, left, they held on to those lands in their name. Um, and all lands um, now belong um, to the government and you can only lease land. Um, so, you've, so because um, a lot of ones came to Ethiopia um, in the 90s, didn't have no um, visas. If you're coming from England, you could only stay uh, in Ethiopia legally for three months. So after three months, you became illegal. So that means you had no rights in the country. Um, so it was very difficult um, to get um, land from the pioneers. Um, I myself um, tried to get um, land um, from the pioneers, but the pioneers wanted compensating for their land. Um, and if you don't have no money, you, you, you can't get the land. That was the situation. So not being able to get land um, from the pioneers, ones were able to get land from the Ethiopians um, who had land um, that was given to them um, for farming um, by the Farmers Association. So ones were coming eager to get land, had money and started to buy land from these farmers. And then you had um, pioneers and then you had some 12 tribe members um, would assist ones to get land. And at the same time, um, they would be compensated for their time and effort too. Um, once there wasn't that much land available at that time either. Um, ones would pay for the land. The land is not so much in their name. If it was a 12 tribe member pioneer, then the land would be in their name because they had the, the legality. The, the land would be put in their name and um, you would compensate them for, for their time. And then the intention was to come back um, after uh, after a couple of years to re to claim those lands back. But what started to happen was that the Ethiopians themselves, if they sold anybody any land, um, they would come back and say, well, no, we didn't sell your land, we rented land and we want the land back. So that's where the real problem is. There is a problem uh, amongst Rasta and Rasta, but the main problem is that the Ethiopians themselves are coming back and, to us and saying, well, no, because what they'd done as Ethiopians was illegal, according to the Ethiopian law, and they could face jail time for, for selling land. So a lot of them wanted to get those lands back, and they used every trick in the book to get the lands back. Um, Ethiopia um, politics and um, is, is a lot of uh, French uh, influence in terms of uh, proclamations and, and, and other different um, namings for, for certain things. So you found that a lot of Ethiopians wanted their lands back and um, we would take them to court and because of our legality a lot of the times we would lose the case and they would um, get the land back some cases we did win but then after a while in the in the 90s um, priest Paul came to um, Shashamani as he was um, not in Shashamani at the time he came to he found himself in a situation to come to Shashamani and through his um, contacts and, and, and associates, he was able to have control of a certain portion of land. When I, say, I don't mean like, you know, the land was his. No, it wasn't his. Mm. But he was in a position to assist ones to gain land. Right? And again, a lot of the ones who were getting these lands didn't have no legality in the country either. Um, but Priest Paul was, you know, the, I would say um, a good administrator in, in, in that regard to make sure that if you wanted land, you could get land. Okay. But there's an opportunist um, level that we all have. And if the opportunity arises, ones take advantage of that opportunity. So if somebody buys a piece of land and they haven't returned for six or seven years, then you would sell that land to someone else thinking that that person's not going to come back. But when that person comes back now, it's, you know, it's a problem. True. So that's where it all kind of 
started and I want you to fully understand that it's not a fact of well um, somebody got a piece of land and somebody just sold it to someone else no there are reasons why that happened all right and a lot of uh, individuals found themselves in a situation where they thought they had land but the land has been sold to someone else and then you had a situation where the person who brought that land um the person who they brought that land from would sell that land to someone else too and this is the rasta and rasta um vibes in terms of land um so that has been happening for for a while um it's been recognized uh, not just by um the community in shashamani but it's become a thing that has gone out worldwide and once uh, around the world are, are only hold, um, holding on to certain words they say well oh, rasta sell land and um man go out there and getting robbed and but the, the, there's a an understanding that we need to kind of get to understand before we can even start accusing ones of, of these things mm. um a lot of accusation has been put towards priest paul some of it justified some of it not and it's not just priest paul um there are ewf members who, who who have done the same there were 12 tribe members who have done the same um there are bubu shanti members who have, who have done the same you know it's 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 a source of income too you know because if you come to ethiopia and your funds run out you have to find a way of of making money so if everyone else is making money from land why can't we make money from land and and, and that's where it all kind of um sprung up but it's to the, to the detriment of of those who have spent their hard earned cash um to acquire land go back to the country that that, that they came from accumulate more funds come back and build a house so when they come and and the house is gone it's like it's the same kind of situation um um that as a youth i grew up with where my parents are from jamaica and a lot of ones um in from jamaica and different parts of the caribbean when they're ready to retire to go back to jamaica they would send money um to you know to build a house and then once they reach there the money's gone there's no house there's no land mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's the same kind of you know it's the same kind of thing you know what i mean it's not just the rasters that that do it. it it's it's a common thing that happens within families and and communities worldwide no different for us in cheshman i feel bad for those who have, who have lost out um through that and as far as the ewf is concerned um the ewf stands for um the land grant we defend the land grant but because of the different changes from the third government to the transitional government to now the federal government you found that a lot of opportunity a lot of opportunities came about which was um out of the control of the ewf administration all right so i don't want once to be blaming the ewf um for what's occurred i want once to fully understand the steps um that, that that's happened to to make this situation um the way the way how it is um and a lot of uh, and i've personally um met with a lot of ones who are in that situation try to assist them in in the best way um that we can so when it comes to rasta on rasta that's internal so internally uh we we, we try to resolve um, the issues where we can not very easy um to do um and then at the same time the community itself um of uh, after years and years of uh, this happening not just between rasta and rasta but with ethiopians and, and and rasta the community has established um a land and security committee and this committee um represents uh, individuals who have um land issues so if a, if a, a brethren um has had a piece of land and then the ethiopian comes and takes back that piece of land and they end up in court then this committee that was established by the community represents them and so far we've been able to um have some successes and ones have been able to get lands their lands back there are um numerous um court cases still going on and we as the community are making representation um the ewf um plays a major part within this as well as the um the committee that was established um need um to be you know recognized so that recognition um for the 
for that committee is coming through the EWF. So any letters that they send out um, to the federal government or if they need to send out um, you know, a, a letter to the um, local um, administration, they will use the EWF letterhead. They will use our stamp. We See. support um, everything that is being done to make sure that our rights um, are respected. And that means also in terms of land. So we are working um, with the administration in Shashamani um, to, to address these land issues. Um, but the land issues came about, as I said earlier, through the different changes in government. Mm. First, you had the Dirk take la took, took land from us and then gave us some land back. Then the transitional government came where all the Ethiopians from Addis Ababa all over the place were taking land. Anywhere they could see land, they were taking it. Um, so the government in, in um, 2011 um, came out, uh, brought out a proclamation. And that proclamation, a land proclamation, and that land proclamation said that all lands um, belong um, to the government and you can only lease land. So that brought a problem um, for Ethiopians who were um, who had land through inheritance. Because you have um, Ethiopians who have had land for years and, you know, 60, 70, 80 years, and they pass it on to family members to, you know, so what the government done was to establish a committee also where um, those Ethiopians who had land through inheritance could make application to make sure that they could continue um, that um, inheritance of passing lands down um, to their families and, and siblings. Um, but we as a community now, our land is the land grant and we want to um, get the recognition from the government um, about the land grant and we also want to know what is the what does the government intend to do to assist um, our community when it concerns land um, so but the easy open world federation has always been um, making application rep making representation um, for the land grants but when you've got other issues um, developing within a, a, a small community there's always issues um, so it's not just a land grant issue that we've been um, dealing with there are other issues that we've been dealing with so the EWF administration is on top of its work um, but we can't um, expect that the EWF is just going to major wave a magic wand and all the land disputes are going to be settled because there's so many different tangents um, concerning land Mm. Um, so, the EWF administration is strong. Um, the EWF administration is making representation. Um, the community um, in Shashamani is uh, working with the EWF. Um, Twelve tribe members, Bubushanti members, um, Nyabingi members are becoming members of the EWF um, to gain the security that's needed for themselves and to also um, be a part of the development of, of Shashamani. So the EWF is, is playing um, a, a major role. Um, you have a lot of um, ones, uh, um, uh, uh, as an example, you have a lot of, um, say, 12 tribe members who have come to Shashamani and not fully understand the history um, of, uh, of Shashamani. Shashamani wasn't given to the Rastas, right? Um, but because the uh, majority of ones uh, in Shashamani uh, are Rasta, ones automatically have it, well, His Majesty gave land to the Rastas. We just happen to be the black peoples of the world who have taken advantage of the fact that His Majesty gave land. When His Majesty gave land in 1948, the EWF administration um, in America wasn't interested in sending its members um, to, to Shashamani. So you had individual um, Pan-Africanists um, like Mama Bar, she was a Pan-Africanist. Mama Bar, she was a, uh, a member of the Gavi movement. And then she became a member of the EWF. You understand? So a lot of ones became members of the EWF once they reached um, to Shashamani. So the EWF is encouraging um, ones in the community to be um, a part of the EWF um, so that we can um, properly make proper representation. But that's not an easy thing to do because there's so much um, bad history um, that ones seem to always gravitate on instead of gravitating on the positive things um, a, about being in Shashamani. Shashamani is a beautiful place. It's very fertile. Um, the weather is, is nice down there. Food is down there. Um, there's a vibrant community down there. I would say at any, at any one time, 
um, there's at least um, uh, at least 300 to 350 people in Shashamani, a percentage of them being children under 18. You know what I mean? So it, it, it is a, um, a, a, um, a growing community. The 500 hectares of land that was originally given by his Imperial Majesty's and Imperial government, um, I would say at the moment we, as the, as the community in Shashamani, occupy, I would say, at least six hectares of that original 500. And that's not in one piece of land. That's in a piece here, a piece there, a piece here, and a piece there. Mm. Our next door neighbors are Ethiopians. We're integrating with the local community. Um, and now that the Ethiopian government is recognizing our community, we're able to integrate more. But when we when we wasn't uh, in a position to integrate as much as we wanted to integrate, it left the door open for scrupulous ones to come in and take advantage um, of, of, of ones coming in. And, and 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 you see the results of that. And a lot of it is hearsay. A lot of it is um, secondhand information. Um, but like any community, there are problems. I'm not going to say that we don't have problems. We have problems, but we're able to solve those problems as Rastas in Shashamani. The unity is there. The love is there. We all love each other. We look after each other. We visit each other when we're sick. We'll, we'll bury each other. You know what I mean? We'll eat from each other. You know what I mean? Especially um, the, um, my generation. I'm, I'm 62 years old. You know what I mean? And ones from say 45 years old coming up to into their 60s are more unified and want to unify mm -hmm. regardless of the issues and regardless of the problems um and the ewf plays a central role um with with, with um instilling that unity um not saying that the uh, other mansions are not doing their part they are um but i'm an ewf member i'm a worker um on behalf of the ewf and I see what goes on behind the scenes because I'm part of the behind the scenes movement mm -hmm. within the whole Shashamani um, runnings. Yes, I. I hope that answers that. Yes, yes, Ruben Kush, give thanks. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, it's been a joy reasoning with the eye. Um, been very informative. <laughs> I know um, we, we probably could go on and on and on and on. But yeah, we 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 leave some of you know what else is in store for later. You know, what I mean, for another yes, time. Yes, most definitely. I, I would like to um to, to come um, come in again, um because there's still uh, you have a lot of um, questions mm -hmm. um still that um, you would like to ask, and I'm sure once the global membership and the black communities around the world um, hear this reasoning, they will have a lot of questions too. Um, yes, I would sir. like to be in a position to address uh, all the questions. But before you go, I have to um, speak on the EWF. Mm -hmm. um, the EWF um, now has an, uh, an international council. Um, I am the international second vice president. Um, we had a unity convention um, last year um, in America and we had a convention this year um, in Ethiopia. Uh, unification um, is our theme. Um, there are now maybe about 19 different locals um, from different parts of the world who are working with the International Council. Um, unity and transparency is what we're about. We've reached out to all the other groups. You've had some of the different um, representatives from other um, Federation groups uh, on, on your program. Um, I personally have reached out um, to these individuals and these groups um, to ask them to come and sit around the table. Um, so that we can work together. Some have uh, come around the table and some have chosen not to. Um, there are very skillful um, and educated members of the EC Open World Federation who at the moment are not working um, with the International Council. Um, we are encouraging um, these individuals um, to work with the International Council. The Federation um, is rising at, uh, at this time. I'd like ones to fully understand that. Um, like any other orga any organization there are uh, one or two um, issues and some of the issues we as the international council are addressing um, we don't leave any stone unturned uh, we're not frightened um, to confront um, any group or any individual who says um, that they represent the easy open world federation um, we don't want um, confusion um, within the easy open world federation and we want um, the black peoples around the world to fully understand 
that the Ethiopian Welfare Federation is moving in the right direction, even though um, there may be uh, one or two um, issues uh, with other groups. Um, we are reaching out to the other groups. Um, we're interacting with them in, uh, with reasoning, um, not just myself, but the International Council and the global membership. Um, the global membership of the Ethiopian Welfare Federation meets um, weekly um, on, on a forum um, where we, you know, we, we, dis we discuss the, um, the, the business and the affairs of, of the Ethiopian Welfare Federation. And we want everyone to, to be involved. There are, um, on an international level, where ones have been saying, well, um, the EWF has neglected its registration and the EWF has neglected um, paying taxes and, and this and that. That's not the case. Um, the International um, Committee, the International Executive Council has no need to have um, an uh, uh, EIN number, which is a tax number, um, with um, the tax office in America because we're not doing um, business um, to um, um, make, um, represent, you know, to pay taxes or, or apply for a tax exemption. Locals, um, on the other hand, um, once they register as a, a non-for-profit uh, organization or, you know, any other um, kind of registration, um, tax exemption is part of that registration. So if a local, like uh, for us in, in Ethiopia, we're registered in Shashamani as a local. There's a local in Addis Ababa, which is also registered and that registration um, affords us tax exemption. Um, if a local um, in America um, is doing and uh, raising money, um, then they're, they're obliged to pay taxes on that. But because of the, the nature of the, of the Ethiopian World, World Federation, they can apply for tax exemption as a local. So there's a lot of false information going out that the EWF hasn't paid its taxes, all right? Um, the EWF was established in 1937, long before the IRS was established. Um, so there's a, 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 and so these are some of the things that I'd like to discuss um, on another, um, mm -hmm. uh, another reasoning, because this needs to be understood, um, because there is some false information going out about the registration of the EWF and the paying of taxes. All right. Um, it needs to be fully understood that um, the EWF has not neglected um, paying any taxes. Um, but at, the, at this present time, the EWF is not in a position where it has to pay any taxes. Mm. Okay, we are exempt from paying taxes. And any local um, that um, has raised money through fundraising or doing any type of business, they will take out their own um, EIN number with the tax office um, to be exempt from tax as a local. If they need support in doing that from the International Council, we're here to give that support. But I don't want ones to, to have this idea in their head that the Federation hasn't paid taxes for all these years and um, somebody has had to come in with a, you know I mean, knight in shining armour and pay the taxes for us. No, that is not in Gossip. Okay? Um, this needs to be understood. It needs to be uh, explained um, because these are the kind of issues that, you know, um, make ones not want to gravitate to the EWF because of these um, things that are being said by individuals. So I'm here to put the record straight. Um, I've been able to cover um, certain things today, um, but it seems like the time is kind of uh, moving up on us. Mm. And there's so much things um, to be discussed. There's so much more information um, to be um, put out um, to the global membership and, and, the, and the black um, conscious um, ones around the world so that ones get a better understanding of what the EWF is all about. It's not a joke thing, it's a serious thing. You know what I mean? It's about life and death. So we take these things seriously. But the information has to be clear, it has to be transparent, and um, a full clarity has to be given. I'm not frightened to give that clarity. I'm not frightened to answer any questions. So I just start, I give thanks um, for the time. I, I, I hope we could, we, we've we got a bit more time um, to reason still. Well, um, may I have one more like question? Said, uh, uh, yes, go ahead. I'll yeah, stop. May I have one more after. question? One more doubt. One for the eye fitting still. Um, his Majesty grandson went to um, Jamaica the other day and he, he was asked about um the divinity are his majesty being a deity 
I don't know if you heard um, his yeah, reaction. Yeah, I, 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 I heard, I heard that right. And if there's if there's anybody out there that was expecting um, for Prince Hermias to say that His Majesty is the Living God, then you know, what I mean, they need to check themselves. All right, um, I'm not expecting for him to go out and promote that. Um, he is the the chairman of um, um, the Crown Council. And if you check out the history of the Crown Council, the Crown Council is an opposition party in waiting. Um, and they're royalty, so they have to be treated in, in that regard. So to expect, for once to expect for um, him to go to um, Jamaica and say, well, his imperial majesty is the living God, that's, that's not going to happen. You understand? That's not going to happen. You have to give the respect um where where the respect is due mm. so any 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 no one should be looking for him to be saying that he's the that his majesty is the living god no i'm not expecting to hear that from him and i will say that um during our convention um in shashamani um in july and um, prince Hermias was in ethiopia and we was able to have um, an audience with him we had a dinner and we had a nice uh, meeting uh, with him and um, we was able to discuss a lot of things. And um, he supports um, the Rastafari community. He supports the EWF. Um, he wants, um, wants to work more closely with the Crown Council, sharing information. Um, and, and, that's where, and that's where it should be at. Nobody should be looking for him to come out and say that his majesty is the living God. No, that, that, that's not going to happen. You understand? That's not going to happen. The Jamaican government knows what it's doing, you know what I mean. But the um, the Rasta um, community um, in Jamaica um, should be more um, wise mm. and understand what time of day it is. Okay, don't expect um, for anybody from the royal family um, to to come out and openly say that His Majesty is the Living God. You understand? That's not going to happen. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Um, they know and they understand, but they're not coming out and saying it neither. So it's about by faith. You understand? So please, um, global um, members, uh, global Rastafari community around the world, you know what I mean? Don't feel no way um, and don't try to um, pin or push um, Prince Hermes in a corner. You understand? Um, his work um, as an ambassador. Um, for Ethiopia and as the um, chair of the Crown Council is more than what we understand. So him going to Jamaica, um, ones need to understand that Jamaica um, is in the process of entering into bilateral agreements with, e with the Ethiopian government pertaining to trade, pertaining to tourism, um, pertaining to business. Um, there's a lot of things happening between Jamaica and Ethiopia. So it's fitting um, for the Crown Prince um, to be in Jamaica. Um, at the request um, of the Jamaican government. But the, the, the Jamaican government can only make that request because of the Rastafari community and what the Rastafari community stands for. So the government is playing two roles at the moment, mm -hmm. whether we like it or not. But we as the Rastafari community, we know who our, our God is. We don't need anyone to tell us who God is. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. True. I don't need Prince Hermes or anyone to tell me who His Majesty is to me. You understand? I'm looking for Prince Hermias to um, be speaking with the Jamaican government because the Jamaican government needs to come to Ethiopia to take over the coffee industry. That's for one. Um, there's so many things um, that need to be done um, by the Jamaican government. The Jamaican government needs to work um, with the community here, which they have been doing. And the Jamaican government needs to encourage um, the Rastafari community um, to come to Ethiopia and also assist them to come to Ethiopia as well. That's what we should be lobbying for. We shouldn't be concerned about um, somebody um, telling us who our God is. No, it don't work like that. So I respect the king I, uh, uh, as my God, head, and I also respect the prince as the grandson. You understand? Um, you've got uh, Zera Jacob um, is here uh, in Ethiopia, um, being um, really maintained and looked after by the rest of the community too. You know, so everything in its time and everything in its place. But we have to be wise in this time. We have to see what's going on around the world. So don't um, try to, you know, I mean, make it into an issue. It's not an issue. There should be no issue. Um, 
my parents don't see his impure majesty as God. And because I'm a Rasta, you understand? If anybody asks my parents, well, your son is a Rasta, so he's highly Selassie God. My parents can't answer that question. And I don't want them to answer that question. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't expect Prince Hermias to be in Jamaica answering that question. And if he answers it in the way how he sees fit to answer it, that ones are going to chastise him. No, that shouldn't be the case. Ones need to be a bit more diplomatic. Right? We need to um, be able to integrate with peoples around the world. And that's where it's at right now, for the benefit of the black peoples. And that's what the Crown Council is doing. And I support the Crown Council. I support Prince Eremias. And you know what I mean? Give thanks that he was able to meet um, with um, the Rasta community. There were some um, uh, of the Rasta community that decided not to, you know, be around the Crown Prince. And that's because of Jamaican politics, where we're not into the Jamaican politics. So I, don't, I can't understand why ones would use Jamaican politics as, a, as an excuse as to why they're not going to, you know, be around the Crown Prince. The Crown Prince is in, in, in Jamaica. It should be the rest of the community that sees security. Mm-hmm. And that's what we should be telling Babsy Grange. Sorry, Babsy, you, we don't need your police. Our, our, our prince is here. We will look after our prince. That's what should be um, said um, to, to Babsy Grange and the Jamaican government. That's what one should be lobbying about, not boycotting. But, but, you but, but that, one's supposed that, to be there to look after the crown print. I mean, so, sorry, to look after Prince Sarah Jacob. I mean, sorry, Prince Hermias. But that's the way I see it still. I'm here in, in Ethiopia on the ground, so I'm probably a little bit behind mm-hmm. with some of the reasoning out there. But on a practical level, no, one shouldn't be looking for Prince Hermias to be saying that His Majesty is God. No, he doesn't need to do that. He's got other pressing. Um, duties to perform while he's in Jamaica and the only reason he's in Jamaica is because of the Rastafari community so the Rastafari community shouldn't um, leave him out there in the cold like that that's my vote that's my view we are the security for the royal family that's it give thanks give thanks yes I Rastafari yes Ruben Kush it's been an honor and a pleasure yeah for reason with the man and you know yeah for the eye sheer such um eloquent knowledge and information you know with 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 the message the masses at 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 large you know we give thanks um that we could connect from you know from earth to zion it's uh it's a great thing and you know i i give uh much manners and respect to the eye in you know what the eye stand for what the eye been doing um for the rastafari community and for black people worldwide so give thanks again my lord for the eye taking the time you know it's surely an honor and a pleasure yes i give thanks um i just star um i'd say federation rising that's for sure and uh, I, I give thanks that you have um, the platform and the technology is um, giving us that opportunity to able to spread the message and spread the word uh, and clarify things that would normally take months to clarify. Mm-hmm. Um, as a youth, you know, I mean, you want to uh, meet somebody, you got to go to the phone box. You got to have change to put into the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but nowadays, it's not, not like that. The phone don't even have no wire. You know, so we're, we're embracing um, this new technology um, for the benefit of, of our community. And that's what we should be focused on. Yes, not sir. the squabbling. Leave the squabbling to those who want to squabble. And those who want to squabble, you know what I mean, they can go somewhere private and have that squabble. But um, on, on an international um, footing, um, we're here to share information and encourage ones to look um, into Ethiopia, um, um, get the information um, that's needed um, to come to Ethiopia and plan and, and be wise in their movements. True. True, true. So again, um, I just uh, I give enough thanks, and um, I pray that um, uh, we can continue um, um, this uh, this dialogue because I know you have a bag of questions, and I want to make sure I answer all your questions. Yes. Um, so whenever you feel the time is right, um, just hook me up. Yes, far. Right. Giving thanks, yeah, and to the um, um, global um, black um, family. Uh, again, I, I give thanks um, for one's um, 
time that ones are given to, to hear um, this information. Um, take in the information, do the research, um, log on to the Ethiopian Embassy, wherever you are, um, navigate around um, their website, and you will get a lot of information on health, on education, um, social welfare, all the issues um, that affect um, us as a community um, are answered um, there because the Ethiopian government wants the diaspora um, to come to Ethiopia. There's a brain drain happening in Africa. Africans are leave Africa. Mm. We have to come in and replace them. Simple as that. Simple as that. Give it counsel. Yes, brother. Milk yes, the sir. system too. That may I say. Choo choo. Choo choo. Yes, my king. So more love, more strength, the guidance and, tr- and protection. Um upon the eye journey said we. And yeah, I will see the eye soon. <laughs> yes, yes, most definitely. Yes, my king. All right, so giving thanks here. Yes, far right. praises on to the most high. Selassie the first. Ja Rastafari. Give thanks, One my love. Yeah, man. Aye, Peace aye. and love. Blessed. Yes, I love you. Love, love. Love, nice. love, love. Hey, Farai, before the I move. Yes, I. Yeah. Um, the ancient um, the I said something about um the a uh, 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 department. Uh, ancient of days. Ancient of days. All people, all ones can be a part of that. I I, I think that is important for Rastafari yeah. to help well, the elders. Well, so. what what I will what I will do um I just uh I will send you um some information. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a flyer out there and we have contact um and details as well. I will send that um to you and um. In the in a, in the next um, uh, into, uh, in the next reasoning, I can give more um, information on how ones can um, send funds to assist um, the vulnerable elders um, in Sheshamani. Rastafari, all right, King. Rastafari, yes, I give thanks. Right, give time. Yes, I. Rastafari, yes, King. Love, love, love. Yes, an Arab family, right? They say it there. Um, what a beautiful. Uh, reasoning yeah powerful 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 yeah i would urge the item um to to please like the video it's important that the item do so i know it's long and 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 thing is it me? but um nonetheless is some positive and insightful information that i know the item need and i know it will assist and aid i and i along the way so Reason with us in the comment section. Let me know your views, your thoughts, and what's been said here. Zid, manners and respect, peace and love. Holy man will I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. Bless and sanctify, sanctify and bless. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I guess start the mindset. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I guess start the mindset.